Welcome to the final episode of the On The Drift podcast for season two. What a season it's been, what a year it's been. Thank you so much for the support. But unfortunately, I'm riding solo again uh, today because Declan is really under the weather. He's actually in the wars, genuinely. So, fingers crossed he gets better soon. We can... um, yeah, get some off-season content going, which we want to do. So there's about six weeks between Group 1s and we'll probably take a couple of weeks off. But in between that, we will be doing some interviews with some people in racing. Um, But yeah, we'll let you know about that on our socials. But let's kick on. Let's get through this uh, last last, uh, podcast of the season. So Tats Tiara Day at Eagle Farm. It's been an awesome winter carnival. So let's kick off. Um, with our, of course, our great mates at Labrokes, our special interest segment. This week, we're doing brilliant backmarkers. So, we're going to give you our five, top five brilliant backmarkers um, that we've seen over the years and even ones that were before our time. And the first one on the list was Rough Habit. Now, do yourself a favor if you haven't seen this, but and I, I'll even put it in the show notes, but... The 1992 winner of the Stradbroke, my goodness, that is one of the most unbelievable wins you'd ever hope to see. Um, He won 11 Group 1s, rough habit, which was unbelievable. And he actually won the Stradbroke and the Dubin Cup twice in successive years. So, in the same prep. He won Group 1s, I think, from 1,400 metres up to 2,400. Such a versatile horse, but my goodness, he had an elite turn of foot and I think he won six group ones up in Brisbane so tip of the hat to rough habit number two on the list was Warham now I love a good um I love a good rags to riches story which we've done previously but this six-year-old had a turn of foot like nothing else and he he didn't he didn't always get it right but he definitely did in the 2012 Oakley plate he was last at the final furlong in an 1100 meter race at Caulfield which you'd pretty much ride him off each time but my goodness it's like he hit that immunity star from Super, Super Mario Brothers or something and he just absolutely screamed home to nab the rest of the field uh, right on the post. He was 21 bucks that day. And you actually look at the jockey, Damien Brown, at the time, and it's like, it's to me, and I, I'm an idiot. I don't know anything that I'm talking about, but it's almost like he, he, he was surprised by how quick the horse was going as well. So, yeah, Warren, unbelievable. Last, last race he actually won as well. So, um, Number three on the list, I wanted to put an international on the list. So, do you remember Pakistan Star? My goodness, what a... This horse's debut win is just one of the most unbelievable things I've ever seen. So, he won two group ones over in Hong Kong, did all his racing in, at Sha Tin, but his debut run was something had to be seen to be believed. So, he jumped and he was 20 lengths off the pace. And and that was only two furlongs into the race, and I think it was only a 1,200-meter race. But he just had this unbelievable sustained speed that he just kept getting better and better and better as uh, the longer the, whole, uh, the race went. And he ended up winning the race by two lengths, even though he gave him a 20-length start. And I think he that was really con- something consistent with his racing right through hours that he just basically gave punters a heart attack every time he went out there. Now, you always had your uh, your heart in your mouth whenever Chautauqua went around. Now, he's number four on the list. He's, he's the obvious one from an Australian um, standpoint, I think. The, his nickname, obviously, the Grey Flash. Um, he, I looked at his starting price profile actually, and it was actually amazing how often, even though punters, bookies, everyone alike knew what his um, racing style was like, he still started around that two. He was always like a two dollar favorite or a three dollar favorite, whatever it is. The punters loved him, and. 
He won three successive TJ Smith stakes. I think he's the only horse to do it. And he also won the chairman sprint in Hong Kong, which was one of the more unbelievable wins you'd ever hope to see. Um, and his last ever win was that last TJ where he was absolutely unbelievable. So, yeah, tip of the hat to Shitakwa. But the last horse on the list was the mighty Maccabi Diva. So, I think it's fair to say that she was a fairly good horse. Um the apple of Australia's eye, I believe, and probably our best ever staying horse that we've ever produced. So she was a seven-time Group 1 winner, including three Melbourne Cups, only horse to do it, and a Cox Plate as well. But what I think was so impressive about her and jockey Glenn Boss is that they were just so in sync and they always... Bossy basically just put her in a position wherever she was comfortable. But more often than not, that was basically last in the field and or in the, you know, second half of the field. But they would just be able to time their runs to absolute perfection. And that last that last Melbourne Cup, Greg Miles absolutely calls it perfectly. Um, a nation uh, roars for a hero. What a line. But yeah, that's that's our that's our special interest this week. Did we miss any back markers? All of this was uh inspired by Brooklyn Hustle. We we're at the track a few weeks ago and she was absolutely unbelievable. She's one of my favorite horses. Um rightly or wrongly, she's starting to win me back some of the cash I've lost on her. But she is she has an elite turn of foot, but I don't think she is quite up to this list. But let us know if there were any other uh, back markers that you believe we should put on the list. But on we go to Eagle Farm this weekend. So we have the Tas Tiara, and stupidly, I haven't even got it up yet, but let's keep going. Tas Tiara Day uh, at Eagle Farm, race eight on the card, 1,400 meters, wave for age. Pretty handy here at field. I actually found it really difficult to find a clear on top selection in this race. Um, I thought Tefane, the top weight, was a really good, really good chance. Number two, Savatiano, you can forgive her for a one poor run. Then I thought Brooklyn Hustle's in the game. I'm just not not too sure about the possible wet track. Subpoenaed, I think, is a fantastic chance. And Nudge, you got to back her mare in form as well. So. I don't think if I think if you backed any of those, even chucking an Odium down the bottom, I think they're all fantastic chance. Um, there isn't too much speed in the race. I think if you've drawn wide like Sabatiano, Dame Giselle, or even Mizzy, who's in about that midfield, I think they can find the find the lead pretty comfortably. Um, but I am going for Tefane on top. So Craig Williams stuck with her. Um, there's three horses drawn inside her that will be scratched uh, that are in the emergencies. So she jumps from Barry 11. I don't think that's too bad. She's just in absolutely elite form. Her last two runs sticking with the mare in form. I think she's right in the game. Um, I'm, if Sabatiano had drawn a better gate, I think she would be pretty hard to beat. She does appreciate um a bit of cut in the ground as well. And I think I've, I've got a feeling Nudge is going to run a really good race here. She's been really, really impressive. My big query on her was dropping back to the 1,400 meters. I think she, she, I think she would be cherry ripe for that 1,600 meter race. And I think she is a bit better on top of the ground. So that's my trifecta in the race, but it's wide open, wide, wide open. But on to the rest of the card. So, I'm not very organized here, but my best bets on the day. Uh, so, my roughie of the day is up in race in the last. I think it's not really roughy price, but let's call it an each way. Last race of the day, I think Exhilarates number three is a silly price. You're going to get around nine bucks with Labrokes. I'm more than happy to forgive her for one poor run. Um, and I think she actually gains a gains a leg on a track that get, has a bit of give. She's drawn perfectly, Bowman on board. And 
in this class of field, there isn't anything that really spooks me too much. So, especially with Baller being scratched, um, I think, yeah, Exhilarates looks a cracking bet at that uh, each way 9 to $10 quote. Other horses that I'm really keen on, yet yeah, obviously Tefane in the feature, but I also did like race seven, number five, Genzai the Wolf. I think this horse is in some pretty good nick as well. Um, he does drop back to the 1,000 meters from the 1,200, so I think that is a little bit of a query, but they'd love to keep this horse fresh. And he's okay with the some giving the ground if the track is playing that way. He'll, he'll be sitting about midfield, He'll hit the hit the go button. Hopefully, it's a long straight at Eagle Farm, so each horse should have its chances if it's within earshot. I think he's a good price at around the $9 quote with Labrokes. And my best bet of the day is in race four, number one, Polly Gray. I think she's one of the best weighted horses across the country this weekend. She's only giving a kilo and a half away, and she's quick math, 37 uh, rating points better than the bottom weight. So I think she's absolutely drawn drawn perfectly. She's weighted perfectly. Tommy Berry in the saddle, who's in a terrific nick. She's about $2.70, $2.50 with Labrokes. So I think she looks a really good play. But um, as I tune off, um, I'll put up some of Declan's best plays of the day. But... Uh, thank you so much for listening for uh, season two. It's been a pleasure bringing this to each week. Not really liking these uh, solo episodes. I like to have someone to talk to, i.e. Declan. So if he could pull his finger out, that would be amazing. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for listening. Uh, we're going to have a couple of weeks off, but we are after that, um, we are going to bring you some of that interview content um, in the lead up to season three, which starts off, I think, in the wing stakes. So All the best, guys. Uh, Thank you again. And yeah, we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the On The Drift podcast.